Hey, welcome back. In this video, it's very similar to the last example. We even have the same diagram. Uh, but the question this time is we're missing tension. And we want to know how hard can the person pull on the rope without causing the crate to slide up the ramp. So very similar, um, but basically we're just looking for, yeah, just the maximum force that this person can apply that will have impending slip, but actually uh, just impending slip. We don't actually want the object to slip. Um, so yeah, there we go. Let's draw a free body diagram and see what we can do with it. Um, so let's go here. We'll label it. That's our free body diagram. Um, we can draw on all our forces. We're going to have tension, our unknown tension going off to the right, right? It's just following that line. Uh, our mass, or no, sorry, our weight is going to be pulling down, and that's equal to mass times gravity, so 90 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second. Uh, squared and that's uh, 883 newtons. Um, we're gonna have our normal force acting uh, normal to the surface and then lastly we're gonna have our friction force. Now the thing about friction force is we know that friction force opposes the impending slip and the way that the question is worded so we're saying how hard can one person pull on the rope without causing the crate to slide up the ramp. So we're saying the impending motion is for the block to slide up the ramp so I know that the friction is going to be resisting that and pulling it down the ramp, basically. Um, really, I should be drawing everything through the mass center here, but uh, we've already kind of said that it's just simplification. There's no moments or anything. Um, I just kind of prefer to look at the friction force here, actually right where the surface, the contact surface is. Um, but really, everything should be going through the mass center. Okay, so friction is equal to mu s times n. All right, um, let's go... Let's go down here and we'll write sum of forces in the x direction uh, and we can figure out what this is. So we're going to have t and then we're going to go we're gonna have t minus the x component of this force. Uh, and these are all on 20 degrees. Maybe we even want to write that in here. So it's like um, for the slope that was 20 degrees. Uh, this angle is 20 degrees, and uh, I guess this angle is also 20 degrees. Okay, that makes it pretty easy for us. So the x component of the friction force is going to be um, mu times s, or sorry, mu s, n times cos of 20. Cos of 20, just like that. Uh, and then we also have some x component here of this normal force, which I conveniently forgot to label with an N. Um, so we're going to have, uh, again, that's going to be going in the negative x direction. So we'll have minus N. I want to write that in black, actually. Minus N sine of 20. Yeah, cool. N sine 20. And that's all equal to 0. So I'm actually going to just leave this here for now. We'll come back to this in a second. Um, let's switch colors here and we'll do the sum of forces in the, uh, the y direction. Sum of forces, because we have too many unknowns in here to solve for that just yet. Um, and there's this one there's an equal sign in there. That should be more like colon. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, we're all good. Uh, sum of forces in the y direction. Okay, so looking at this, we're going to have n cos 20, right? That's the y component of this normal force. So we have n cos 20. We're going to have a minus 883, right, straight down for the weight, minus 833. And then we're also going to have another minus here. It's going to be mu sn, that's a subscript s, n times the sine of 20, right? That's that y component times sine of 20. Okay, that's all equal to 0 because... As long as the slip is impending, this thing's actually not moving, and we're all good. We're in static equilibrium. All right, so we can simplify this a little bit. So we get n. This is going to all come out. So we're going to get n times the cos of 20 minus 0 0.5. Right, that's that mu s guy in there, times sine 20. Uh, and that's all going to equal positive 833. Right, all I did is took that over and pulled out the n, um, and then we can simplify that and bring it there as the, the denominator. So we're going to get n is equal to 833 
over 0 0.767. You can do that all in your calculator if you really want to, but uh, there we go, 833 over 0 0.767, and that's going to basically, we're going to find out that the normal force here is 1,151 newtons. Um, and you're asking, like, why are, we, why are we looking for the normal force if the whole question was about the tension? Well, we need the normal force so we can find the friction force and then, uh, actually, I think we can skip the friction force uh, and just go straight to the tension. Yeah, I think we can do that right here. Yeah, just tension. We had T and N. My bad. Uh, so looking at that, so we're going to come back to this sum of forces in the X direction. Uh, maybe we'll change color. Uh, we'll do it in black. So we're going to go like that. Um, so we're going to basically get T minus, well, that's 0 0.5, right? That's up there, times N, which is 1151, times cos 20, uh, minus 1151, uh, times sine 20, equals 0. And then we can just simplify all that in one step. That's going to be T. Uh, I guess that's going to equal minus, well, sure, we can do that, minus 541, minus 394, equals zero, that's that term, that's that term, and we're just going to figure out that the tension here is equal to 935 newtons. So basically what this is saying is that if this guy pulls at 935 newtons, or with a force of 935 newtons, that slip is impending. Um, and if he pulls even just a hair more, then slip will occur.